Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So I hope you guys enjoyed my previous video which was um, set one for the mock 2022 practice style edXL paper. Now in this one we're going to focus on the second set of questions. So I'm basically giving you guys giving you guys a taste of what could potentially be in the 2022 paper onwards. So yeah without further ado I'll say let's just jump straight in and see how this paper goes. <music> The density of gold is 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed and a gold bar has volume 150 centimeter cubed. Work out the mass of this gold bar. Okay, so for this question, we need to know that density equals mass over volume. So we always got to relate the three variables, yeah? If you guys find it hard to memorize this formula, like a nice little trick I always look at is the fact that on the first line, it says that the density, has a density of gold is 19.3 grams, which is a mass and it's over some kind of volume, which is centimeter cubed, so m over v. So that's one way to look at it. Now, to find the mass, you literally just go make m the subject. So to make m the subject, because you're dividing by v, I would times v across. So it's going to be volume times density, which will give us mass. Then all you want to do, guys, is just pop in the values. So volume is 150, density is 90.3. If you multiply those two values together, you're going to get a mass of 2895 grams and that's it now for 10 it says change a speed of 50 meters per second as in per one second to speed in kilometers per hour okay so to get this units right let's just think about it for a second to go from 50 meters to kilometers we need to remember that for one kilometer we would have a thousand meters so to go backwards we need to divide by a thousand okay so we can say we're gonna have 50 over a thousand kilometers i mean we could leave as a fraction guys you don't have to think too hard now for one second we can imagine we've got one second to go from seconds to hour well we need to also realize that there are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour so basically we have 60 times 60 so essentially we have one over 60 squared hours okay or you can think of it as 1 over 60 times 60. And that's it, guys. And then if you want, you could calculate this. But you can just go ahead and solve the question. So because you want 50 meters per second, that's basically saying 50 meters per second is the same as, well, this many kilometers. So what's that? 50 divided by 1,000 kilometers over, so per um, hour. So hour, we have 1 over 60 squared hours. So 1 divided by 60 squared hours hours and yeah guys now at this stage you literally just pop this in the calculator remember to use a fraction bun and write another fraction on top and another fraction on the bottom and when you put this carefully in you should get an answer of 180 kilometers per hour and that's it guys all right number 11 so the diagram shows the shader shape ABCD made from a semicircle ABC and a right angle triangle ACD. Okay, so a right angle triangle here and then half a circle here. Now AC is the diameter of the semicircle ABC. So AC is this part here. So that means half of it would be a radius. And they want us to work out the perimeter of the whole shape. So from D all the way around here, guys, yeah? So just look at this here. To work out the perimeter, we will need to find the length of this curved curved region yeah so from a b to c now to get this we need to firstly realize that because you're dealing with circles we need the circumference formula yeah so we know we should know that the circumference of any circle so the length around it is 2 pi r yeah now because you've got half a circle so we can say that circumference of uh, let's say length a b c yeah is going to be half of your formula so instead of 2 pi r it'll just be 1 pi r or just pi r okay now to work out the radius first things first we need to figure out what this length of ac is yeah and then half it now because you've got a right angle triangle we can use pythagoras theorem yeah so let's just call this length um x for now yeah now to use pythagoras theorem it's literally a squared plus b squared equals c squared where c is your hypotenuse yeah so essentially this is your a this is your b and this is your c so putting in a formula we can say a squared plus b squared so that's x squared plus 15 squared must give us 17 squared guys yeah and then all you want to do is make x a subject so what i'll do i'll do 17 squared take away 15 squared so it'll be something like this x squared equals 17 squared 
minus 15 squared. Put this exactly in the, in the calculator. And by the way, guys, this is not going to give you 2 squared, yeah? So try not to subtract the numbers. Just write as you see. And then square root your answer, something like this. And you should get a result of um, 8. So that means AC is 8 centimeters, yeah? So X equals 8, so AC equals 8. Because you want a radius of AC, guys, this means you want half of AC, which is just 4. So R here equals 4 centimeters. And now because you know R is 4, literally we just replace it into this formula. So we can say that the circumference of half a circle is just pi times 4, which is 4 pi, guys. Yeah. So all of this around is just 4 pi. And yeah, we're pretty much done. So we can say now, okay, therefore the perimeter is going to be 4 pi plus 15 plus 17 so we can write here perimeter is 4 pi plus the other lengths 15 and 17 and plus 17 and then putting this in the calculator you should get exactly 44.6 centimeters if you guys don't have a pi button um, you can use the value 3.14 but it's recommended that you guys have a scientific calculator yeah? otherwise this question could be a bit like annoying all right 12 Astrid wants to buy some oil. Now she can buy oil from either the Dane Oil or Arctic Oil Company. Now here is some information about the price that each company will charge Astrid. Okay, so it looks over here that she's gonna pay 4.2, she's gonna have 4.2 times 10 to the power of 5 liters of Dane oil for that many crones. And this is a Norwegian currency, by the way, guys. Yeah. And for Arctic oil, she'll get that many liters for quite a lot of dollars. Okay, so just to, just a quick recap here. This many liters is just literally, if you put this in the calculator, you should have about 420,000 liters. So that's a really huge amount. So this is for our companies. Now, Astrid wants to get the better value for money for the oil. Now, according to this um, currency rate, one US dollar, if it's US dollar, equals 6.57 crowns. Now, looking at both of this, from which company should she buy her oil? Either Dane oil or Arctic oil. You must show your work in. All right, so the most important thing for these kind of questions is not the fact that you're dealing with standard form. It's the fact that we should always make sure our currencies are in the same units, yeah? So I recommend that we change crones to dollars. You could go dollars to crones, but for the purpose of this, we're going to go from crones to dollars. Now, if you're going from a bigger number to a smaller number, you always divide by the, the rate. So in this case, we're going to do 2.5 million divided by 6.57, yeah? So in our calculator, guys, let's start working this out. So for Dane oil, we can say that the cost of this is going to be 2,500,000 crones divided by the exchange rate. And this should give us a dollar's equivalent, yeah, which is about $380,000 and $517.5 well, dollars, yeah. So that's how much it costs for that for 4.2 times 10 to the power 5 liters, yeah. Now the question is, um, how do you know which one's the better rate? So at this stage, because now we've got the same money, we should go ahead and div divide the quantity by the by the dollar value and see how many leads you get per dollar. So we can say, okay, at this stage, under the Dane company, we got 4.2 times 10 to the power 5 liters. So we write that down. So always leave your answer exactly as you see, yeah? And divide it by your, your calculator answer, yeah? So for this value, I'm going to put this here, 380517.5. And when you do this, you should get a dollar value of roughly 1.10376, um, something like that, liters per dollar, yeah? So that's how many liters you'll get for every one dollar. Now, we repeat the same for Arctic oil, yeah? So for the Arctic case, um, well, because we're already working in dollars, we can go ahead and divide these two values. So 8.6 times 10 to the power 5 divided by that value, yeah? divided by the cost, which was $770,000. And when you do this, you're going to get a rate of 1.11688 liters per dollar. And from here, we can kind of see which one gives you more for your money. So we can see that for the Arctic case, you're going to get a bit more liters for every single dollar that you get. So in this case, you should buy oil from Arctic oil <laughs> that's it and we're done all right 13 so here we got four points on a circle with center o 
AOD is a diameter of a circle, so the line kind of crosses the diameter. Um, angle CBD is 28, so this is 28. And angle BDA is 32, so this one's also 32. Now they want us to find the size of angle BDC. Now BDC is, is located here. You start from B, you stretch down to D, and you go to C. So there's an angle between them, so it has to be this one here. We can just call that one X for now, yeah? Um, also, give a reason for each stage you're working. Alright, so for this kind of question, like before we even look at it, it's probably important to know what kind of properties we're looking at, yeah? Now, this is the kind of ones that I personally recommend. So, flicking on this page, um, we're looking at these two shapes, guys, yeah? It says for number six, the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So, what we're trying to say here, if you've got a diameter or a line that cuts through the center of the circle perfectly, and you've got lines coming off it, you can make a bunch of right angle triangles. So in our case, we can just look at the shape here. We got AOD, which is a perfect diameter, and just cutting through A, you got right angle triangle here. So this means that this is therefore right angle, yeah? Now to give a reason for that, you can literally say um, the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. So that'll be it. So we literally angle ACD is 90 degrees. You can literally write that explanation as we go along. Now, at the second point here is this recognizes kind of ribbon shape here. Yeah? Now, this ribbon shape takes the form of this kind of shape here. So, it says that angles in the same segment are equal. What that tells you, like that a segment is basically a partition, yeah? Like anything b b before the chord is a segment, anything after this chord is another segment. So, we've got a massive segment here and a little tiny segment here. And anything that forms a ribbon have the same angle. So check this out. You got if this was like 10, this would be 10. If this was 20, this would be 20. And also the fact that adding these two opposite segments give you can add up to 180. But we don't have to worry about that for now. In this case, um, what we're trying to say here, if this is 28, this must also be 28. So we could put 28 here. Um, if this one's 32, this one's also 32. So we put 32 here as well. Now, finally, we have, I think we have a lot of information here. So to find X, we can just look at this triangle here now, yeah? So B, C to D. If we just like tie this up a bit, guys, yeah? So I'm gonna read your triangle here. So something like that. We know that from at point B, we've got 28. So this is 28 degrees. Now, if you look carefully at C, we've got one big angle. We've got 32 plus 90. That, that should be what? 32 plus 90, 122, yeah? So this is 122 degrees. Therefore, angle X, which is at D, which is what they want, is going to be the leftover. So call this X, it's just going to be 28 plus 122, which is 150 degrees. And then to get to 180, you need to add 30 more. So that means X must be 30. So the answer here is 30 degrees. All right, number 14. So there are 20 glasses in a cupboard. Now 13 of them are large and the rest are small. Roberto takes at random two glasses from the cupboard. Okay, to complete the probability tree diagram. So let's have a look here. So it says here that if you took a large one, well, we know there's 13 and there's 20 together. So that means the probability must be 13 over 20. And we know for small, there are seven out of 20. Now, if you go to the next tree, because if we took a glass out of the cupboard, this means we now are left with 19, okay? That's what we're left with. So because you had a lot, you took a large out, you now have 12 large left, but you still have seven on the top because you didn't touch the large. However, if you went downwards, if you took a small cup, you had seven, you would now have six left out of 19. Because you didn't touch the large previously, you would have 13 remaining out of 19. And yeah, guys, that's literally it for A. Now for B, work out the probability that Roberto takes two small glasses. So to take two small glasses, just follow the tree where it says small, small. So you take a small with a probability 720, and a small again with probability 6 over 19. And when you're going through the same tree, when you're chaining things together, you always multiply them, guys, yeah? So it'll be 7 over 20 times 6 over 19. And if you just put this in your calculator, you'll get 21 over 1. Uh, 190 and yep yeah, that's it all right here are six graphs guys from number 15 now you've got graphs a b c d e f 
and before we like look at the question i think it's a good it's a good idea to probably figure out what kind of graphs they are yeah so starting from graphs a we have a shape in this form so you have something that never touches x y axis this is known as a graph which is a reciprocal or one over x now if you look at graph e it looks kind of the same as graph a except now that these curves which were on this positive axis and negative axis have flipped it upside because of that this is basically a y equals minus one of x so if it flips it upside just take a minus sign yeah and then and again if you look at graph c and d they're kind of the same now c is similar to a and e the only difference is instead of one of them being down they're both up because they're both up it means it's being squared so it means y equals 1 over x squared. Anything squared means you always get positive results. Now d is the same as c. It's, it's being um, flipped downwards, so it's kind of symmetrical. So this would be y equals minus 1 over x squared. And lastly, for graph b and f, um, this is kind of a weird shape, but this is actually a cubic graph. When it looks a bit like that, it's cubic. So this would be, uh, which one's which? So this would be y equals x cubed. And this is reflected y equals negative x cubed. Yeah, I think yeah we'll leave it like that for now. So next one, complete the table below with the letter of the graph that could represent each given equation. Okay. Oh yeah, by the way, I use the values of one. By the way, just it doesn't matter because these are just constants. You could put any number. The graphs will still kind of look the same. Now for the first one, it says y equals two over x squared. So this is a, this is like a one over x squared graph. So we're talking about c. So this is just c. For this case, you got a negative something x cubed. Well, negative x cubed was b. And lastly, you got a reciprocal negative something over x. Well, something over x was minus something over x was e. And yeah, that's literally it for this question.